Edward Sallow was born in 2226 near the Boneyard. His early years were marked by tragedy. Raiders murdered his father when he was only two years old, forcing his mother to seek refuge with the followers of the Apocalypse, a group dedicated to preservation, restoration, and furtherment of knowledge. It was within the follower's library that the seeds of his future were planted. As his mother toiled, cooking and cleaning for the followers, young Edward devoured the free education offered by them. Though he was a brilliant student, his success was driven only by his personal interest in subjects, and his arrogance quickly alienated his peers. The followers preached enlightenment and peace, but to Edward, their mission was a naive dream, one destined to fail in the harsh realities of the post-apocalyptic world, a belief that never went away. By the time he was 20, Edward had become a budding anthropologist and linguist. As such, he was sent on an expedition to study the dialects of the tribes living in the Grand Canyon. Joining him was Bill Calhoun, a fellow follower, and Joshua Graham, a Mormon missionary from New Canaan. During their journey, his party was captured by the Blackfoot, a weak, disorganized tribe on the verge of extinction. Where his companions, Bill and Joshua, saw hopelessness, Edward saw potential, and in return for his party's freedom, he offered the Blackfoot more than just the secrets of language. He offered them survival through knowledge of war. He trained them in the use of firearms, taught them to make explosives, and drilled them in military tactics. It was here, as he stood over the bodies of his enemies, that Edward Sallow died, and Kaiser was born. The transformation from scholar to warlord was as swift as it was brutal. Kaiser led the Blackfoots on a campaign of total warfare, annihilating a rival tribe, the Ridges, the weakest of the Blackfoot's enemies. The pile of corpses left behind as the Blackfoot destroyed their village and slaughtered their people cemented Kaiser's reputation. Soon after, most of the other tribes chose to surrender. However, the strongest and most dangerous tribes refused. But in the end, they too were forced to join. In a single year, Kaiser's coalition of tribes had grown so large that he was able to crown himself the ruler of a new empire, the Legion. Kaiser's obsession with the glory of ancient Rome stemmed from a cache of historical texts he had found earlier in his expedition. To the uneducated tribes he ruled, Kaiser appeared as a living god. To further consolidate his power, Kaiser erased all traces of tribal identities within the Legion. The men became soldiers, the women became slaves and breeders, and all were absorbed into a monolithic, militaristic society dedicated to Kaiser's will. Three years later, in 2250, Kaiser's Legion had grown into a powerful force, subjugating tribes across Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico, with Joshua Graham helping him every step of the way. While Joshua happily served Kaiser, becoming the Malpace Legate, his right-hand man, Bill Calhoun wasn't. He didn't agree with Kaiser's campaign of violence against the tribes, and he explained this time and time again telling Kaiser that what he was doing was wrong, it was immoral, and the followers would be ashamed if they saw what he was doing. Now instead of being killed or forced to serve as so many had before him, Calhoun was allowed to leave, but only on the premise that he returned to the followers and warned them not to interfere. Bill did warn them, and the followers did not intervene. By 2274, Kaiser had brought the entirety of Arizona and much of the surrounding regions under his control. In the ruins of Flagstaff, Kaiser established his first capital and began calling himself the Son of Mars, Mars being the Roman god of war. Kaiser proclaimed that his divine mission, which they all believed, was to unite the fractured world under his rule. But Kaiser's ambitions extended far beyond the desert tribes. 
he set his sights on the new California Republic, seeing it as a decadent and corrupt reincarnation of the Roman Senate, plagued by bureaucracy and greed. In Caesar's eyes, the NCR was a republic doomed to fail, weighed down by its own inefficiencies and its people's short-sightedness. He envisioned himself as a new Julius Caesar, destined to overthrow the crumbling republic and establish a new empire, transforming the NCR into a military dictatorship where power rested solely in the hands of the strong. The inevitable clash between Kaiser's Legion and the NCR came in 2277, at the First Battle of Hoover Dam. The Legion marched west under Joshua Graham's command, believing that victory at the dam would be the final blow needed to break the NCR's hold on the Mojave. But for the first time, Kaiser had underestimated his enemy. The NCR Rangers, led by Chief Hanlon, laid a trap for the Legion. As the battle raged, Graham's forces were drawn into a deadly ambush. NCR sharpshooters decimated the Legion's officers, and a retreat into Boulder City led to even greater disaster. NCR forces detonated explosives packed within the city, killing scores of Legion soldiers. The defeat was crushing, and Kaiser, ever the ruthless leader, ordered for his friend and loyal legate to be burned alive and cast into the Grand Canyon for his failure, although rumors of his alleged survival have surfaced. Though the Legion had been repelled, Kaiser wasn't finished. Over the next four years, he rebuilt his forces, absorbing new tribes, adopting new weapons, and preparing for another strike against the NCR. However, this time, Kaiser was playing a longer game. His ultimate goal was not just to win the battle, but to annex New Vegas and establish it as the capital of his empire, a city worthy of his ambitions, a new Rome to stand as a symbol of his eternal power. Yet, even as Kaiser stood on the brink of conquest, his own body betrayed him. A brain tumour had begun to ravage his health, leaving him plagued by severe headaches, blackouts, and partial paralysis. Despite the advanced technology available to him and his legion, Kaiser refused to let them advance technologically. He believed that technology was the reason for humanity's reset, and that life must contain hardship and self-sacrifice. These necessary struggles would strengthen his empire and forge a nation that was strong enough to survive. While the Legion is ignorant of mankind's former knowledge of medical science, relying on primitive healing methods alone, Kaiser himself has access to an auto-dock, providing instant relief for both himself and those he favours. But there's only so much a machine can do. And as Kaiser's health continued to decline, his officers began to whisper, though none dared challenge him openly. To his followers, Kaiser remained a god, but behind closed doors, he struggled with his mortality and the fear that his empire would crumble without him. Adding to his difficulties were new challenges in the Mojave. Kaiser needed to eliminate Mr. House secure alliances with powerful factions like the Boomers, Great Khans, and the White Glove Society, alliances that would only last until he conquered the Mojave, after which they too would be forced to forget their history and join the Legion. In addition to these troublesome deeds, Kaiser also needed to destroy the Brotherhood of Steel and assassinate NCR President Kimball, both of which he would achieve by any means necessary. Yet, another threat loomed on the horizon. A mysterious courier, a wild card, whose actions could either unravel Kaiser's carefully laid plans, or become a tool for his triumph. As he prepared for what could be his final conquest, Kaiser's power hung by a thread, threatened not just by external enemies, but by the fragility of his own body. Despite his claims of divinity, Kaiser was only a man. His vision for a new Rome teetered on the edge of greatness or oblivion. 
and it seemed that fate itself, embodied by the courier, would decide which path he would ultimately follow. <laughs>